So that I can give you guys a little bit more detail, I have got a second camera set up to my right. Now every time I'm speaking about where I'm aiming, I'm aiming directly for this camera lens right there. So that's what my target line from where I'm sitting. The first up point I'm going to talk about is this ball valve. Now on most match balls, you do find it in the seam of the rugby ball. And we want to have that sitting directly in the middle of the ball. The reason being is this valve does have weight. It's a built-in bladder uh, that surrounds the bladder, but it is, it is the heaviest part of that inside bladder of the rugby ball. So if we have that sitting in the middle of our ball, it just means that the ball's gonna rotate around that axis and fly a little bit straighter and truer. Now you may think this is a really small detail, but as you get more consistent and grow your kicking technique, it does have a big effect. And also, it's just another step to the process that we can control. So we might as well control it with where we're putting this ball valve seam. I always like to have the ball, uh, the ball valve facing straight down. That way when I was standing at my back of my mark, I didn't see the valve, I knew that it was at the front of the ball uh, and leading towards I wanting to kick the ball. Sometimes the question does come up, okay Pete, well what if the ball valve is in the side of the ball? So sometimes on other balls you'll see the valve in the middle. I would then in that case have the valve on the way that my natural ball flight goes. So if my natural ball flight is from right over to left, then I'd have that valve sitting on the left side of the ball. That way it's helping and assisting me curve the ball and fly the ball exactly how I want to fly it. So for this 12 week goal kicking program, I want you to focus on using the same tee throughout the program. One kicking tee I've got here is a low one and I've also got a slightly higher kicking tee where we set the ball up a little bit differently. Now I'm going to talk about the two differences between those two tees. The first kicking tee I'm going to talk through is the RB Wolf, so a low style kicking tee. So as you can see here I've got my ball valve facing you guys where I'm targeting. If I now change my target so I'm just kicking to the left here so off to the microphone, you can see that we've got this big beautiful sweet spot at the back of the ball. Now on the Gilbert logo it's around about where that eye is, is the height that you should be making contact with your foot knuckle. So we want to come in here and make a big hard contact around about a third of the way up the ball, around about that eye is where we want to try, try and to strike the ball. We then shift to a higher kicking tee like the RB Vortex mid-cut. Again, I've got my ball valve uh, at the bottom. But as we turn this ball sideways, so now I'm kicking towards the microphone, we actually want to be hitting more up the end of the ball. So like an out-of-hand kick, we can get that big base of the ball, that nice hard cross on the bottom of the ball, and make impact up there. That's the sweet spot we're trying to make contact with. So we get all those seams to look at, that nice hardest part of the ball, which is generally why when you use a slightly higher tee and have this style of ball setup, you can get a little bit more distance because you're hitting a slightly harder part of the ball where those seams meet. On your foot knuckle, you're gonna get a nice harder strike which sometimes gives you a little bit more distance. But again, goal kicking is very unique. Whatever way you can strike the ball well and the most consistent is the style of tee that you should be using. The last point on your ball setup is what your seams are doing, and I'm gonna use my ruler to explain this point. So as you can see here, I'm, I'm lined up, I'm aiming directly at you guys in that lens. You can see here that both my seams, so this, this bottom seam and the top seam are lined up pretty straight, so that ruler is pretty much straight up and down. You can see here now that if I roll those seams in, so I'm still aiming directly, I've got my ball facing the exact same way, you can see now that my ruler is on slightly more angle, so the bottom seam and the top scene is now falling away to the left. The other op opposite way of doing that is falling to the right. So again, my ball's still facing directly at you guys, but you can see there that my ruler, the angle that it's on, is now facing to the right. So how I'd suggest this is, if, you, if you've got a natural ball flight, so for me it was from my right side to my left side, I'd always have the ball seams just turning slightly towards the way that I wanted the ball to go. So for my ball setup, if I'm aiming directly at you guys, that's pretty much straight up and down. I would just have my ball slightly tilted so that it would help my ball flight. So when it comes to setting your ball up consistently, I want you guys to now start thinking about, yes, your ball valve, the angle of the ball, and also how your seams are looking. So if we can make that consistent every time, we're gonna be striking the ball a lot more consistent off the tee. The same thing does apply when using a low kicking tee. As you can see here, my seams are basically straight up and down. If you do like to expose that sweet spot and have the ball rolling out, just make sure that you're getting those seams looking exactly how you want. So rather than setting the ball up on this angle and then that angle and then a little bit shallower, just make sure that you're consistent with how you're setting your ball up and make sure those seams are looking the same every time you're kicking the ball. 
And just to wrap up, I wanna cover off those points again on why your ball setup is so important. We wanna try and create the same ball flight every kick that we take off the tee. If our ball setup's the exact same, we're exposing that sweet spot. When we're standing at the back of the mark, we can be really confident coming into that ball that we're gonna get a nice strike. Having the ball valve in the same place gives us the peace of mind that our ball's set up perfectly. Every little detail that we have in our ball setup is adding to our goal kicking process and that's going to help us stay in process mindset. So when it gets into a big moment, the crowd's cheering, I have to make this kick. Instead of being nervous and shaking and not knowing what my process is, so if I've got details, those are little tasks that I can tick off, the crowd might be giving it all to me and, and really trying to get in my head, I can think about my details, my valve, my ball setup, where I want the gilbert sitting, what logo I want facing me my ball set up and it just helps me stay really internal and focused so that I can execute the task and get a successful kick. Right, that's enough chat about ball setup. At the end of this week, I really want you to have a good understanding and have a list of things you do within your ball setup. And every time we're putting that ball on the tee, it is the exact same at a 100%. Let's now take a look at what week one looks like on the field.